What's going on, y'all? This is B. Taylor, and you are tuned in to DIY by Style channel on YouTube. Uh, today, we're going to go over doing an oil change for a 2015 Dodge Durango Limited. It's a V6 engine, and it does take 5W20 oil. We're also going to replace the filter on there, which is right there with the cap open. Um, items that you're going to need for your oil change and filter. Obviously, you're going to need the oil and the filter. Um, I got these from AutoZone. They had a deal for five quarts plus the filter for about 40 bucks. Um, there was another 10 for another uh, quart. Uh, so that's the Platinum High Mileage by Pennzoil. Um, this is the full synthetic, so that's for high mileage vehicles. I also have my shop towels because I'm going to make a mess. I'm sure of it. Um, the tools that you're going to need, it's pretty simple. You're going to need um, a wrench, um, a socket wrench to remove the lug nut from the oil pan so it'll drip. Um, and this right here is the one you're going to need. It's, an, it's a half inch socket uh, that you're going to use for that. To remove the filter in the compartment, you're going to need a 15 16th inch uh, socket for this one it's a larger um, hole to put it in so I need a larger socket wrench in order to do that um, and of course you're gonna need your own oil catch pan um, which I have right in the front right here um, there are a few things that you need to prepare for um, if you're going to do it yourself I know a lot of people like to go to the mechanic or the dealership to get their own uh, to get their oil changed for me i like to save a few dollars and i like to get some of the better uh oil the synthetic oil it's a three ton jack stand there i have it on each side um and then i have the jack lift this is a three and a half ton jack lift that should suffice i also have chalk blocks in the back on each side just so you can see that and then in addition, I wanted to show you that I have the parking brake on. This is the press to release. If I start the vehicle, the reason why I have high mileage is that it's recommended 75,000 miles or more to um, get the full synthetic. So obviously oil change is required and the parking brake is engaged. So you wanna make sure you have that. If you look at the mileage here, I'm a little over 75, I'm at 79. So that's why I'm using the full synthetic. You can get a cheaper price if you wanted to. Um, but for me, I like to get the good stuff because if I plan on keeping the car for a while, then I wanna make sure it runs as long as possible. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is remove the filter so that there's an airflow once I remove the lug nut from the oil pan so it'll drip more smoothly so when i have a bag right here so that once i've removed the filter um, the remaining oil will will not spill all over the car so here we go should be pretty straightforward so if it's a little hard to pull out some older vehicles and maybe a little harder, especially if you haven't replaced the filter in some time. But um, with the 2015, I've done this a few times, so it shouldn't be too bad. So as I pull it out, you can see it's starting to drip. I'm gonna put this in the pan. And even with that, I still had some drip. All right, so underneath the vehicle right now, we have the oil pan or the oil drip right underneath the oil pan. If you're able to see this right here. This right here is the lug nut that's holding all of our old oil. And that's sitting right in between the right and the left wheels for the front uh, shaft. So um, I am going to pull this out now. Yeah, this one's tough. Let's try it again. Here we go. 
Go ahead and put the oil pan back in place. Just, it really just takes that one little bit. Then you can screw it by hand. If you watch it, it'll start dripping once I pull it all the way out. There we go. I'm gonna let that sit for a minute or two till it runs all the way down. Okay, I am putting the lug nut back in. It's dripped pretty much all the way down. It's just a small drip that'll last forever if you let it. So I'm just gonna plug it back and let that be that. Close this down. And I can do this by hand until it gets a little hard. But then I use my torque wrench to tighten it further. I don't want it too tight because I don't want to strip it. So I'll just give it just enough to where I can do it with one hand. Do a little bit more. And we should be good. As you can see, this is the old filter. I'm gonna pull a new filter right out of the box right now. And if you look at the difference here, you can see a dirty filter that's been used versus a brand new clean filter that hasn't. Um, so we're going to replace this with the new, the old top. Just put it back on there. You'll feel a little clip uh, snap that goes in, and we're gonna we're gonna put that right in there. But before we do, what we want to do is lube it with just a little bit of oil, engine oil, just to make sure there's a good greasy fit on it. But just to put it in perspective, the used oil, I don't know what you know what, no, what new oil looks like, but this is new oil that's just hit this paper towel as opposed to the old oil. You can probably see the difference. So just letting you know. And we'll move this tip up. Just so that it has a good greasy fit. Let's get a little bit more in there. A lot more actually <laughs> and we're gonna put this right back in so twist it in by hand so you can't anymore and then use love nut to tighten it the rest of the way Now we're going to do the last part, which is put the oil into the engine itself. You have this funnel that, um, I know I didn't have this as a part that you need, but you don't truly need it, but it's certainly helpful um, in terms of avoiding a mess when you're trying to drip this into the engine compartment. So it is recommended. Just getting past the first quart. Now we're gonna pour it in the five quart. Just be careful not to go too fast because sometimes um, there are air pockets that kind of make the oil bubble up. Or if you feed it in too quick, it'll go up the funnel and you risk the potential of it spilling over on the funnel. Then you'll have a mess on your engine which causes burn off once you start it and you'll have a nasty smell probably for a few weeks. So be careful with that. Okay, the last step in the process is to actually reset the oil life on the Durango itself. This is a 2015, so in order to do that, we're going to switch the ignition into the on position without pressing the brake so the engine will not start. 
Within 10 seconds, we need to press the accelerator three times fully. And then we need to turn the engine off or turn, turn it off of run and then restart it, putting your brake on your foot on the pedal. And from there, we have a fully live auto life, oil life. Thanks for watching guys. Please click like, subscribe, leave a comment and watch the other DIY videos on this channel um, for more information. Thanks, see you soon.